Hello, my friends. How are you? Welcome to another special episode of 30 Albums for 30 Years, another global pop episode. These are meant to be a companion to a course that I teach, a college course called Global Pop Music. But of course, you know, these are for anybody who wants to listen. So I hope you enjoy today's episode as we discover the music of West Africa. We recently talked about the music of South Africa, and uh, we're going to get into it. So I hope you enjoy some great music here, the music of West Africa. Let's check it out. Okay, let's unpack some of the history of West Africa, obviously just an overview. The earliest known civilizations in West Africa was the Nok culture, N-O-K, which thrived in what is now Nigeria from around 1000 BCE to 300 CE. Then the Ghana Empire, not the country of Ghana, not to uh, confuse the two, emerged around the 4th century. That's the Ghana Empire. The Mali Empire, one of the most famous West African empires, rose to prominence in the 13th century, it became one of the wealthiest and most powerful empires in the world, known for its control of gold and salt trade routes. The Sungai Empire succeeded the Mali Empire in the 15th century, known for its organized bureaucracy and strong leadership. West Africa then played a crucial role in the trans-Saharan trade, which connected the regions to North America and the Mediterranean, establishing trade routes for, again, gold, salt, ivory, and other goods. Then Islam was introduced to West Africa through trade contacts, and it became a major cultural and religious influence in the region, and many West Africans converted to Islam at this time. Of course, we cannot discuss the continent of Africa without discussing European interference. In the late 19th century, European powers established colonial rule in West Africa, and the region was divided amongst various European nations, including rulership by the British, the French, the Portuguese, and the Germans. Then West Africa countries began to gain independence from European colonial rule, in the mid 20th centuries. Today, West Africa is a diverse region with numerous countries, each with its own unique history and culture. The region continues to face various challenges, of course, including political instability, various economic issues, and health crises. One of the popular styles to come out of West Africa, particularly Ghana, is called highlife music. Highlife music often features multiple rhythms, polyrhythms, various percussion instruments that provide intricate patterns. So it's a very groove based music. In terms of instrumentation beyond their percussion instruments, we have trumpets and saxophones and guitars all introduced to West Africa during the colonial period and then the Jazz Age in America. The lyrics and High Life songs typically address a wide range of themes, including cultural identity, social issues, and love. High Life music is danceable, usually. Uh, Sometimes the melodies are energetic, and it was very popular for social gatherings and celebrations. In the 1920s, High Life was essentially a brass band music, geared towards the upper class and the socialites of British-occupied Ghana. But then after World War II, Ghana moved towards independence from the British, which it eventually won in 1957, and the style of high life changed somewhat to further include calypso, Latin, and more jazz elements. E.T. Mensa, M-E-N-S-A-H, was a leader of high life music from Ghana, born in 1919. He's often referred to as the king of high life. He lived till 1996, 
Mensa began playing flute at the age of 12, and then the piccolo, and then the alto saxophone. In 1946, the band The Tempos was formed by European soldiers, and eventually African musicians took over the band, and Mensa joined the band in 1947, and eventually emerged as the leader. The group gained international fame, and Mensa even performed with the great jazz trumpeter Louis Armstrong. One of his most celebrated songs is called Ghana, Guinea, and Mali, three countries in West Africa. It was released in the 1950s and listened to the blend of styles such as jazz, Latin music, and calypso, along with the call and response vocals and horn breakdowns. As with much high life music, it celebrates African pride. Another notable release by Mensa is called Ghana Freedom. The Republic of Ghana is the first sub-Saharan African country to gain independence from colonial powers in 1957. And it is one of the most stable democracies on the continent. And it boasts almost three decades of a peaceful transition of power. It's a big deal. Now, although Ghana has a relatively strong record on upholding some civil liberties, discrimination against women and LGBTQ plus people persist. There are weaknesses in the judicial system and the rule of law. And like many countries, there is corruption, which challenges the government's performance. And political violence is a growing concern. Now, as far as the song, Ghana Freedom, take notice of the introductory horn line and some of the melodies. They sound awfully similar to the Johnny Cash hit, Ring of Fire. Take notice also of the clave woodblock pattern and the overall relaxed spirit of the music and the vocals. Juju music is a popular musical genre from Nigeria that's particularly associated with the Yoruba people. Now it's important to note that Nigeria gained its independence from England in 1960. The musical genre, Juju, emerged in the 1930s, and it has since become one of the most widely recognized genres of Nigerian music and Afro-pop music. Juju music is known for its rhythmic and melodic complexities and often features the usage of Yoruba instruments along with a mixture of Western instruments like the guitar and the accordion. Some key characteristics of juju music is again that blend of Western instruments and traditional Yoruba instruments. So in terms of Yoruba instruments, it's the percussion instruments, the talking drum, the bata drum, the gangan, and various types of congas and bongos. These drums provided a distinctive polyrhythmic, multi-rhythmic, syncopated, offbeat pattern that are the hallmark of the overall groove of much of juju music. Also, call and response patterns. Juju songs often incorporated call and response vocal patterns, which we've talked about when we talk about various African and African-American musical genres. Also key is the guitar work, especially in later Juju music, the guitar, especially the pedal steel guitar and the electric guitars played a significant role in Juju music and often there were multiple guitars played at once. In terms of lyrics, Juju music often featured lyrics that touch on various aspects of life, including social issues, spiritual issues, moral issues, and love. The lyrics are often poetic and filled with proverbs and metaphors. Juju music is closely associated with dance and is played in many Yoruba celebrations, including festivals and weddings and other social gatherings. King Sunny Ade, who's also known as KSA and has been nicknamed or hailed as the African Bob Marley, is a singer and multi-instrumentalist, most notably a guitarist, 
who was regarded as the first African pop musician to have an international impact. Born in 1946 to a royal Nigerian family, Ade learned music early on. He first started performing with a band called Federal Rhythm Dandies, a high life band. Then in 1967, he formed the Green Spots and the band later became known as the African Beats. In 1982, he received great notoriety in Europe and America with the release of the album Juju Music. And he even did some, some film work as well in America. Ade is known for not only his incredible music, which blends all types of world music influences, but his great stage presence. Ja Funmi comes from Ade's breakthrough album, Juju Music. Check out the layering of the multiple electric guitars, pedal steel guitars, synthesizers, electric bass, the talking drum, and other various percussion instruments. Jafunmi means fight for me in the Yoruba language. The song is a plea to the creator to fight for me so that I may move forward with success in life. Ja Funmi from KSA King Sunny Ade. Another track from King Sunny Ade is called Merciful God. It is Ade's most downloaded song, and it comes from the album Seven Degrees North from 2000. It shows Ade's development throughout his career and is an excellent display of Ade's faith and his blend of African and Western musical styles and language. Enjoy Merciful God. Another style of music from Nigeria is called Afrobeat music. And like most African musics, it's highly rhythmic, featuring various percussion instruments such as the drums, the congas, and the talking drums. Afrobeat often includes horn sections, typically featuring saxophones and trumpets. The music is highly influenced by American jazz and later soul. Songs in the Afrobeat style often have extended instrumental sections allowing for periods of improvisation, that's creating music on the spot, much like the jazz tradition. Like many African music traditions, Afrobeat also has call and response vocal patterns in which the leader sings out or calls and a chorus of background vocalist answer. One of the most defining characteristics of Afrobeat is its lyrics, which are often centered around political and social issues. Afrobeat is known for its infectious grooves, its rhythms, which makes it highly danceable. One of the most fascinating musicians of the 20th century has to be Fela Kuti. Kuti was a singer, saxophonist, keyboardist, trumpeter, guitarist, and drummer, so a multi-instrumentalist. He is the most impactful practitioner of Afrobeat music. Born in Nigeria to an upper-middle-class family in 1938, his mother was an anti-colonial women's rights activist, and his father was a reverend, school principal, and the first president of the Nigerian Union of Teachers. He was also an anti-colonial activist. His brothers were both known medical doctors, and after attending primary school, Kute went to London to study medicine himself, but instead he decided to study music at Trinity College of Music, and he entered as a trumpet player. While at school, he was playing a hybrid of jazz and high life music with a band he formed called Kula Lobitos. By 1960, Fela Kute was married, and he had three children. In 1963, Fela Kute moved back to Nigeria, but now it was the newly independent Federation of Nigeria, and he reformed his band Kula Lobitos. 
He renamed his style of playing to Afrobeat, so that's where the name comes from, and he combined Yoruba music with funk, jazz, high life, salsa, calypso, and other genres. In 1969, he traveled with his band to the United States and discovered the Black Panther movement, which heavily influenced his thinking and his music. At this time, he renamed his band Nigeria 70. In 1970, Kuti returned to Africa and started a music compound called Kalakuta Republic. This was a place where musicians could live and they could record. He also set up a nightclub called the Afro Spot, which he later renamed to Africa Shrine. He even changed his name to Anna Kulapu, he who carried death in his pouch. And he lived by the credo, I will be the master of my own destiny, and I will decide when it's time for death to take me. In 1972, Felicute worked with the drummer from the band Cream, Ginger Baker, to record the album Stradivarius and continued to impress Nigerian audiences. In 1977, Africa 70, along with Felicute, released the album Zombie. It was their breakthrough album and it heavily criticized Nigerian soldiers. The government was not pleased with Kute's criticism and during a raid, he was severely beaten. His commune was burnt to the ground and his mother, the first woman to drive a car in Nigeria, was thrown out of a window leading to her death. In response, Felicute delivered his mother's coffin to the head of the state and then released two songs about the incident. The first is Coffin for the Head of the State and the second is called Unknown Soldier. In 1978, Kute married 27 women. The marriage of 27 wives served not only to mark the anniversary of the attack of the Kalakuta Republic, but also to protect Kuti and his wives from authorities' false claims that Kute was kidnapping women. Later, he adopted a rotation system of maintaining 12 simultaneous wives. During that year, two of his concerts, 1978, led to riots. Much of his band deserted himself that year when there were rumors that Kute was using the money from his concerts to fuel a presidential campaign. In 1979, he formed the political party Movement of the People. So before we go any further with Felicute's biography, let's talk about the song Zombie, the title track to the album Zombie, which led to Kute's beating and his mother's death. Musically, the tune is funky and it's exploratory, and it showcases Kute's talents as a saxophonist and his visions as a band leader, his knowledge of world musics. It takes quite some time before the lyrics enter, but when they do, Kute likens Nigerian soldiers to thoughtless zombies who do whatever their government tells them to do. In 1980, Felicute signed with Arista Records and released more politically fueled albums and drew huge crowds after the release of his next breakthrough record, Black President. In 1983, he did try to run for president, but he was refused. He then formed the band Egypt 80. Reflecting on the views of Egyptian civilizations and stressing the fact that the Egyptian civilization once belonged to Africans. In 1984, he was imprisoned for 20 months on what was likely a bogus smuggling charge after further speaking out against the government. After his release, he divorced his 12 wives. By 1986, he drew massive crowds while continuing 
to speak out on social issues and on the Nigerian government. In 1993, he and four members of the group Africa 70 were arrested and charged with the murder of an electrician during a brawl. The brawl was fueled by accusations that the electrician was stealing from the band, and by 1990, things began to slow down for Fela Kute. And in 1997, he died of complications related to the AIDS virus. Although he was an AIDS denialist, and members of his family have also denied that that is how he passed. Our final track for today is Sorrow, Tears, and Blood. It's another fellow Kute song, and it comes from the album of the same name. It's another poignant protest song dealing with police violence and the fear of Nigerians who are fighting for liberty. All right, my friends. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I hope you learned a little something about West African music. Of course, I only just scratched the surface, but, um, you know, a good introduction, I believe, nonetheless, to some really fantastic music and some fantastic artists. I hope you continue to listen. For all things regarding the program, you can go to 30 albums for 30 yearscom Together, let's keep this music alive. Peace. <laughs>